If you like this video, please press the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and also give it a thumbs up. You can also support this channel with a donation by using the link in the description. The Donnie-Kruger effect has been stated in several ways, but the basic concept is that the less knowledgeable you are on a topic, the more likely you are to overestimate how good you are. The concept has recently become quite popular for attacking anyone who disagrees with the establishment experts on a topic. It is being abused to shut down discussion by simply claiming you don't know enough to be competent on the topic. In many ways, it has become a way for those pushing it to casually dismiss any line of thinking that challenges their worldview, while insisting that you bow the knee intellectually to the priests they call experts and whose claims they accept on blind faith. The Donnie-Kruger effect is based on a 1999 psychological paper called Unskilled and Unaware of It, How Difficulties in Recognizing One's Own Incompetence Leads to Inflated Self-Assessments by Justin Kruger and David Donnie of Cornell University. This paper probably would have remained an obscure psychological study had it not been popularized by President Trump's political enemies. It has gone from an attack on him personally to being used against anybody who thinks for themselves and comes to non-establishment conclusions. The funny thing is that most people who refer to the Donnie-Kruger effect have clearly never read the original paper. Furthermore, even if they have, they are taking on faith that the data says what the writers are claiming. They are clearly simply repeating and copying what they have heard or seen elsewhere without a bit of independent thought on the topic. This is the standard image used to depict the Donnie-Kruger effect. It shows a steep increase in the level of confidence while you're ignorant on a topic, quickly reaching a peak of confidence that then declines as you learn more and finally rounds up to a lower level of confidence as you become an expert. However, this graph has no basis in the paper. In fact, there is no evidence as to where it originated. It seems to have been drawn specifically to give the impression that it does. It is a totally artificial creation, with no basis in fact. This is a better representation of the effect as presented in the paper. Note that there is a continual increase in confidence from beginner to expert, and not the sharp peak depicted in the other graph. It is just more gradual than the line of actual knowledge. This graph gives a completely different impression than the other one does, and it has less propaganda value. Even this depiction is only a generalized representation of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Furthermore, there are reasons to question the validity of the study and the quality of the data, as well as the accuracy of the interpretation presented in the paper. The fundamental flaws in this paper include the fact that it is a psychological experiment. As a field of study, psychology lacks much of the rigor of the hard sciences like chemistry and physics. Part of this is because the subjects of such studies are intelligent, sentient human beings and not inanimate objects. This is the graph of the first of the four studies from this paper. It is based on the ability to recognize humor. Their responses to specific jokes were compared to what was given by professional comedians. One of the fundamental flaws in this is that humor is highly subjective. Furthermore, among their friends, who probably have a similar sense of humor, they may actually be considered rather funny. Another problem is the fact that this particular study is based on only 65 Cornwell University undergraduate students. They are not exactly a representative sample of the human race. Well, this one is a little better than the first one in that it is actually a test on logical reasoning. It suffers horribly in terms of the size of the sample, which consists of only 45 Cornell University undergraduates. This can hardly be considered a representative sample of humanity. This is a little better with the participants being 84 Cornell University undergraduate students, but this is still not a representative sample. Also, being based on an English grammar test does show a degree of objectivity in the testing. The pattern in this one is actually rather flat in both parameters. This one has a larger group at 140 Cornell University undergraduate students. But yet, because they are all undergraduate students at the same university, it still means that the sample is not really representative.
One pattern that is consistent is the relationship between perceived ability and perceived test score. In general, the perceived test score does seem to be a little lower than the perceived ability. This one does show a slight increase, like the first one does. When you start comparing the graphs of these various studies, they really do not show the kind of consistency that would be expected if the Dunning-Kruger effect were real. While these two show an upward trend, these two fluctuate more, but actually show a generally flat trend. Note also that while figure 3 and figure 4 do show upward trends, they are both within a narrow range of just under 60 to just under 80. This is just within the range that is generally considered to be average. Figures 2 and 3 also fall within the same range, with figure 3 being even more narrow and closer to what is generally considered average. When these four studies are combined, the results clearly fall within the range that is generally considered to be average. Furthermore, there is no consistency with regard to the order found in each quaternal. They literally change places with each step. What this shows is that the results of the Donnie-Kruger study are actually a result of our tendency to think that we are normal. That is, we tend to be unlikely to conclude that we are either above or below normal. A personal example of this fact comes from being able to think in terms of pictures. This is a talent I have had for as long as I can remember. One day I was reading a magazine article that referred to some people being able to think in terms of pictures, and it spoke of it as being an unusual talent. My thought upon reading this was literally, you mean some people can't think in pictures? I had never given it a second thought. I thought that everybody thought in pictures. This is an example of what is known as normalcy bias. That is, when you only have one example of something, you tend to think of it as normal. And we all have only one example of what it is like to be a thinking, conscious being. So we tend to think of our experience as the same as what everybody else experiences. At best, we are just looking at an example of the normalcy bias in action. By itself, this should be enough to bust the myth of the Donnie-Kruger effect. The data just does not show what is being claimed. All it shows is the tendency of people to think they are average or just above it. However, it gets even worse for the Donnie-Kruger effect when other studies are looked at. There is a 2006 paper that shows Donnie and Kruger's analysis of the data to be flawed. The paper is called Skilled or Unskilled, but still unaware of it. How perceptions of difficulty drive miscalibration of relative comparisons by Catherine A. Berson et al. This paper shows the effect of difficulty on the type of data presented by Donning and Kruger, a factor they completely ignored. The results are clear that the higher the perception of the difficulty of the material, the lower the expectations of those being tested on the material. Both tables show these results. However, the second one shows it for three different sets of data. These two are really telling because they show the perception for an easy task, a moderate task, and a hard task. They both clearly show the tendency of those who perform well to get it right on the easy task, those in the middle to get it right on the moderate task, and those on the bottom to get it right on the hard task. This is actually consistent with the normalcy bias. Here is one of the graphs from this study. It shows the easier domain on top and the harder domain below. Now let's compare this side by side with the first Dunning-Kruger chart. Note the difference. It is not only clear that they are not the same, but they are even opposite. With the Dunning-Kruger one having the huge gap on the lower end, where the one from the other study has the larger gap on the higher end. Do I really need to pursue this any further? Well, yes, because there is one more point that really nails down this myth. The problem results from the way the data is presented. In this chart, you have data from 65 people averaged into four quarters, and then only those averages are presented. Nowhere in the paper do we get the performance of the individuals. This is critical to exposing this myth because it turns out that you get the same effect by plugging in random data. This is a chart of random data from 0 to 100. The vertical represents what in Donnie Kruger would be the perceived, while the horizontal represents what would be the actual. 
The chart on the right are, are the results of this data presented the way Donnie and Kruger presented their data. It bears a striking resemblance to their actual data. However, it is unlikely that the data would have been completely random. One factor to consider is that these were most likely multiple choice tests. And any student taking a multiple choice test knows that when there are four answers, you have a one in four chance of guessing the right answer. And therefore, statistically, you can expect to get 25% just by chance. Furthermore, it is reasonable to expect that they would do at least a little better than chance. As a result, this chart shows random results with a 30% floor based on the assumption that no student would assume that they would get less than 30%. Here are the results of this data set presented in Dunning-Kruger fashion compared to Dunning-Kruger's actual data. This comparison of the random data set with the Dunning-Kruger data set says it all. These results show indisputably that the Dunning-Kruger effect has no basis in reality. At best, it is a result of a tendency to think we are average or slightly above average. However, it is most likely just a statistical artifact of the methodology used. In conclusion, the Donnie-Kruger effect myth is 100% totally and absolutely busted.